we do, you know, we, there's this magical thing, and then it's like, okay. I know where you are and I will burn you down. <laughs> this is the best explanation of my life I've ever seen. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to the show. It's a, a show about uh, screw-ups, about missteps, about not quite getting it right. I think we hear enough stories about people who are wildly successful and like to tell you how successful they are. Well, we're going to talk about some of the hurdles and some of the challenges and, and some of the things that make them tenacious enough to be successful instead of just the beautiful story in the end. And today, I have Randy Harrington of Extreme Arts and Sciences. I know that we're going to be talking about consulting, we're going to be talking about working with executives, other big companies, Fortune 500 companies, and how do we take what they're doing and distill it down so that it works for the public and for technology and everything that's going on now. I'm really excited to talk to him on the show. Hey everybody, welcome to the show. Uh, I am here with Randy from Extreme, Extreme. Arts and Sciences, right? Uh, <laughs> it's a, a digital agency in Capitol Hill yeah. uh, here in Seattle. Yep. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Glad yeah. to be here. It's, it's, it's great to have you. Tell, tell me a little bit more about what you're doing right now, about the agency that you've got, the uh, ex yeah. Extreme, 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 Extreme Arts and yeah. Sciences. Well, uh, it's, uh, it's a wild agency because we're, what we're trying to do is to find this new niche in time where strategy and digital come together yeah. in, in some sort of cosmic catalytic way. Is that like a wrinkle in time? It is like a wrinkle in time. Yeah. And the, the really good news is everybody's looking for ways to connect digital and strategy. So yeah. they're like, right on, okay. Yeah. But the bad news is every time we do something, the next time we do it, it's a completely different thing. So we're we're sort of iterating, iterating, yeah, yeah. iterating, and, and because of like the pace of digital, yes. is that what it yes. is? Yeah, because we're doing all this cool crap, but th that was so yesterday that we have to go yeah. do new, more cool crap. So you get to like work with executives to make sure that they 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 kind of tie those things together. So do you? Do you do like ad work, video work, things like that as well, or is it right. mostly that type of coaching that you're working? No, on? I wish it. I wish there was more connections. Actually, there. One of the the challenges we have is that there's just so much organizational distance between strategy and the and the deployment of whatever the hell it is you're trying to do. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. That there there are two different worlds, and I would like to see them a little closer together. So what we end up doing a lot is producing collateral. Uh, f there was uh, several years there where we were just producing slide decks like we were oh, drunken pirates. That yeah, was yeah, the yeah, coin yeah, of the yeah. realm, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need a deck. Yeah, yeah, I need, yeah. I'm going to go to <laughs> Vegas and I need a deck. And then and it turns into a book, right? Like I need a deck, like two bullet paragraph, <laughs> bullet paragraph, <laughs> bullet paragraph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And so there's a whole lot of education that has to go into that. We've we've done plenty of video work and we've done animations and we've built games, and we've built really? registration sites, and we've done web blah, All blah. over the place, so just depending on what's it, coming up. It's, that's the problem. Every single client, we want to serve well, which is great, yeah. but we do little. <laughs> you know, we, there's this magical thing, and then it's like, okay, yeah, let's go on to the next thing. I was, I was just picturing the old Looney Tunes, <laughs> uh, the opera singing one, right? This is right. And I'm like, who is, yeah. is it Elmer Fudd, like, yes, singing as it comes through? <laughs> This is my world. Gestalt. Yes, Gestalt. Um, <laughs> tell me a little bit more then about how you got started in this yeah. in this world. Like, yeah. uh, like, uh, let's see how far back we can go. Right? Back like, in the day, yeah. Were yeah. you uh, yeah, yeah, were you pummeled as a child and then went into <laughs> art <laughs> so that you could compete against the? Yeah. Like, how did how did you get started doing this type of type of work? Uh, so, um, military brat, uh, father, Air Force, and we traveled all the time, uh, basically grew up in Hawaii. Yay. So, mostly in Hawaii? Uh, yeah, junior high to high school in Hawaii. Junior high to high which school. Which does not suck. So, uh, it was great. It was a terrific time. But Hawaii sets you into a frame of mind. It's a big gestalt in and of itself. You yeah. get Hawaiian sort of sinks the, into... By the, the way, that's going to be our, our, our new word, word for like I'm toasting and I'm sorry. the entire time. I'm, no, it's fantastic. It's better than Weltenschein, yeah, and I could have busted that one out. So. <laughs> And uh, next thing you know, I was a, I was a competitive debater and uh, I got a big debate scholarship to the University of Mississippi. And so... so is, is, that, is that the Ole Miss? Ole Miss. That, it is that Ole, is Ole Miss, Miss oh, yes, okay, in Oxford, okay. Mississippi. 
And so I'm like, hey, Oxford, you know, Mississippi, that's like Faulkner country. It is right? big time Faulkner country. Yeah. Look at you busting and out the literary the, references. I know. Yeah, I know. That's I like awesome. to. Yeah, I like to impress. Uh, yeah, myself. I have danced on Faulkner's yeah. grave, which is one of the things you do. Wait, uh, you danced on Faulkner's grave? Yes, you <laughs> dance. You do a little jig and you pour some whiskey and you pour some whiskey on the grave. It's, <laughs> I did not it's, know that. Yeah, it's a thing you do. That sounds like a Faulkner thing. Yeah. But anyway, I go to Ole Miss and that turned out to be kind of a cultural shift. Yeah, uh, you know, because well, it's super laid back, right? When you do the stuff in Hawaii, right? Like, yeah, uh, right, right. I mean, like Hawaii's, everybody's like, yeah. what day is it? Uh, I, I think it's down to, Tuesday. Yeah, and Oxford. Back in the day, the the guys were wearing like ties to class and whatnot, you know. And I was like, <laughs> had a great time with the debate program there. Ended up coaching there for a while. Then went did a master's at Chapel Hill. Started coaching debate up there. And that's a weird thing because you travel a lot and yeah. you, you're exposed to lots of different ideas and you just have this pace of work and learning that's insatiable. You're yeah. just kind of on it, on it, on it. But I think that it was those two things together kind of happened in me where it was like this kind of free lifestyle of coolness and this sense of I just need to absorb crap all the time and yeah, learn yeah, 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 yeah. And, and put it out there, you know, yeah. go talk about it. So then I studied organizational communication, ended up getting a PhD at Oregon in, in uh, organizational communication, and that's kind of how it all- Kept going. Yeah. All kinda, the way through. All the way through. Hey, Jack, how are we looking? You want a drink? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Certainly. Are we close? If you're, if you're We're serving. Ready. We're ready? Yes, sir. Okay, what is, what is it? What, what do we call What do we call this one? Tonight I have the Grand Evolutionary. Top ingredient in this is gonna be Abuelo uh, Panamanian rum. Then we're gonna use a uh, port barrel aged Reposado tequila, hibiscus infused from Centenario. And that'll be 0.75 ounces. 0.5 ounces of Hendrix Midsummer Solstice, limited release. It's a very botanical forward gin. And then 0.25 each of banana liqueur, yellow chartreuse, and harlequin orange liqueur dash of lime bitters and a dash of cardamom bitters actually a drop of cardamom bitters from scrappies this is garnished with northwest flora the drink is an idea of walking through a forest to a mountain across many countries at the same time and here we have a little bit of dry ice we're going to add a little bit of sweet pea essential oil to it my elf fruit from India, used as the sacrifice for the gods. A little bit of apple, dried lime, and a cinnamon stick. Peach resin from peach trees. It is the uh, sap and amber from the peach tree. And a little bit of pine honey. This is honey from a pine tree. And there you have it, the Grand Evolutionary. It's actually named after our friend here's book that he wrote. The Grand oh. Evolutionary. And it kind of tracks his movements across the globe and across disciplines. Wow. So, that's, this, <laughs> Look, this, is, this is the best explanation of my life I've ever seen. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're bubbling. Are you you I'm, down the hatch? You ready I, to go? Yeah, give it a go. We just, we figure it it's out. It's a okay. two-hander. Um, it is, it's a two-hander. <laughs> Yeah, you don't want to like I, I see, I see black fruit in your in your future. I know. Okay. Uh, uh, cheers. Get gest gestalt. Oh. <laughs> wow. That's delicious, actually. Yeah. It's freaky it's, delicious. It's good. It's got like 77 flavors happening all at once. Oh, oh, oh. yeah, the Dr. Pepper. It's three Dr. Peppers. It's yeah. three it's, Dr. Peppers. It's three Dr. Peppers. <laughs> it's the original recipe that they broke up I know. all the iterations I, of yeah. Dr. You know, Pepper. You're actually not see. far off. I, I think there's something there. All right, I got, I, I got to take I some. I wish, I'm gonna, I, I want to take a picture of the inside of this glass because it's, it's, uh, it is a piece of modern art. You went to school, you're obviously like fantastic at communicating by going through all that stuff. What about um, what about working? Like did you have did you have day jobs? Did you do other types of things like as you as you went through in yeah. Oxford and after? Yeah, yeah. Well, I did some interesting things. I did a lot of work in radio for a while. In fact, uh, when I was in Oxford, I worked at a, a what was called New Country. It was new new country back in the day. New New Country? Yeah, W W O R F M. And uh, I worked seven to midnight and I got a call one night from uh, 
in the, the station, of course, is a little shack out in the middle of a field, you know, yeah. with a big old tower uh, out there. And this guy calls me up. The guy at the crossroads he selling goes, his soul to the I devil. want you to play some Hank Williams Sr. And I had no Hank Williams Sr. in the control room at all. And Nothing. I said, I'm sorry, you know, sir, I don't have that. And he goes, uh, know where you are and I will burn you down. <laughs> <laughs> So it was a it was a rough night for me that Did night. Did you have to find some Hank Williams Sr.? I, I literally or? could not get it. I, yeah. So, yeah. My other favorite story from that one was a woman called me on a Sunday, and she said, uh, hey, it's very important that you play Hawaii, uh, Elvis's Hawaiian wedding song at precisely 127. <laughs> and I said, uh, well, actually, it's not on my playlist, and I, I can't really do that. And she says, you don't understand. We're having our wedding here at the Sonic Drive-In, and we're all going to turn on our car stereos. <laughs> And the bride and groom are going to walk down the middle of the Sonic Drive into Hawaiian Wedding Song. <laughs> so by God, I played Hawaiian Wedding Song no at 127. Way. Yeah, I, I wished like hell I had pictures of that. That is amazing. That's incredible. So you went from that. It sounds like you still kept like a career in that. What did, what did you do after? Yeah. So then I went up to Carolina. Got married. Yay. Uh, still married. Yay. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. So I went up and did a master's at Carolina. Then I went down and taught at UNC Wilmington. And while I was there, some guy comes up and he goes, "I think you should be on the TV news." And I said, "Okay." So I went and was a TV news anchor for about three and a half years. Oh, CBS wow. affiliate. CBS affiliate. Yeah. In and, North Carolina. In North Carolina. And it was a kick in the pants. It was a lot yeah. of fun. Well, fast forward a little bit then. You you, you go from there and then... Did it, you came all the way the to West? Oregon. Yeah. To Oregon. Yeah. I went all the way to Oregon to do a PhD. I flew out there. Uh, I left in July. It yeah. was 172 degrees in North Carolina. And I landed in Oregon and it was just... Oregon. I, it was Oregon. It was, <laughs> it was beautiful. It was like I got off the plane it and was I was Oregon. like, Oregon. It was like seventy-three degrees and no humidity. And yeah, I was like, dry okay, and beautiful. I'm home. You do the non-securish thing, right? Eventually, like, yeah. did you did you work in the real world for a while, or did you really start your own? Thing? No, I really jumped right in. Uh, I got a gig uh, working for the FDIC. I don't know what that is. What That's is that? Federal, Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation in yeah, Washington. You, yeah. I spent some time doing that and in the process learned every conceivable way that a financial institution can fail. And yeah. that sort of began the the roll into consulting. Yeah. Okay. So you went into consulting. Yeah. So first, I started doing some keynote time. speeches and stuff like yeah. that. Just like solo stuff. Yes. So it's like Lone Wolf. Lone <laughs> Yes. Lone Harrington Wolf. Associates was my creative name back in the day. Harrington Associates? Yes, yes. <laughs> it was, I just went for it. Now, why didn't you stick with that type of stuff? That sounds like it's probably uh, you know, lucrative-ish you figure out, ish you know, doing consulting. I, I, a lawyer told me that I was working for one time. He goes, you know, when you're working for yourself and you move the wheelbarrow all day and then you put it down, when you come back, it won't have moved at all. Oh, yeah, <laughs> And that was an true. interesting thing to yeah. think about. So it was... It was the first time I started thinking about maybe doing something more than just being yeah. out there. Yeah. And then moving on to doing the yeah, extreme. To do extreme art. So art. yeah, at the time I was really obsessed also with the idea of what uh, Navy SEALs can bring to. I know. Wait, Where did what? they come from? <laughs> so I was. I was obsessed with Navy SEALs. I, I had done some homework and research uh, on for an academic paper on high performance team development. Yeah. And I met a bunch of uh, drunken sailors in Fort Pierce, Florida. Wait, wait. That's, that's a whole other story. No, no, that's, that's, that's my favorite kind of story. Drunken sailors yeah. in Florida. Extreme arts is this basic idea that really small groups of people can run circles around the kind oh, of absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, big cumbersome organizations. Yeah, yeah. So we wanted to be the kind of SEAL team of consulting and intentionally be small and yet highly capable. Did it work? <laughs> we've had uh, we've had successes and uh, <laughs> and some and like some uh, not yeah. successes. And some of the basics I think are the things that I've screwed up on the most. Uh, having having a company name that makes sense is one of them. You know, extreme oh, yeah, arts yeah. and sciences. I mean, I I still don't know what it means, and I'm I'm kind of okay with that. Yeah, but. Uh, it turns out to be a problem. Yeah, I, I actually was pitching the company to a hospital group where the nun, a nun, was the oh, main person extreme, on the board. Extreme, extreme, extreme. She said, "I don't think we can have 
anything <laughs> called extreme. That was, that was a sign. <laughs> so I think getting the basics right is a thing. I think I struggle a lot with uh, details and planning. Yeah. I'm a big picture person and I want to go just go fast and get it done. Yeah. And I've learned to shut up and listen to the people who are detail people yeah, and who yeah, actually yeah, yeah. think through things. Yeah. Every time I've really had a major issue, it's been that's it's, it's been details. It's, it's been planning. details. Yeah. Well, it's interesting that that sort of um, maybe attraction is the wrong word, but um, you had this 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 pull towards Navy SEALs, and I would think that that's definitely definitely it is. the details and planning. It is, and you know, one of the the secrets that, that they will be happy to tell you actually is that one of their ways they're successful is they don't do things where they won't be successful. Oh. So they don't go do it yeah. unless they're going to crush it. Yeah. And uh, there's a certain level of wisdom there, you yeah. know. Uh, no, I think that that's right. Because they yeah. put it all together. Like they figure it out. They so figure it's, it's, it out. It's not that they, they, they won't try something hard, but they'll figure it out before they exactly. go to do the hard thing. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And they will rehearse and plan and rehearse yeah. and plan yeah. for days. So still taking what other people would consider risk. Right. But, but, but plan it out and have it ready to go. That's exactly <laughs> Yeah. Well, what are you thinking about the, like, about the future? Like, are you going to continue doing what you're doing? If there's something else that you're interested in or that you're, you're thinking about trying? Uh, you know, it's one of the nice things about our wackadoodle business. Uh, we had a, we're having our 20 year anniversary. Yeah. Go team. <laughs> but it's been, uh, 21 year startups is the best way I can describe it. We yeah. have been perpetually in startup mode. Just every year? Every year. Because you have to reanalyze what's going on, what the technology is, yeah. the way everything's right. set up. So, yeah. so the future, yeah, I, I, I am getting to the place where uh, I feel there are more opportunities to express more art. I want to do more uh, art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, be involved in more. Like, what do you what What do you mean by that? Like, uh, music uh, is a thing for me. But what type of music are you like? Do you want to record? Do you want to play? Mm. Do you I do play some music, but I'm not very good at it, so I don't do that in front of people. But um, what do you play? I play guitar. I play you play a lot guitar? Of guitar? Yeah. Yeah. I think we have a guitar. I uh, know. Sorry. <laughs> um, but uh, but I, what I am doing <laughs> is I, I so I have this passion for the Delta Blues. I have passion for the Mississippi Delta. Mississippi Delta, that you, need, makes you sense, should have a right? passport to go to the yeah, Mississippi yeah, Delta. Yeah, yeah. It is the most screwed up place in the world, and yet it's, it's magnificent. I mean, there are people that the poverty is desperate. That, you know, there's like no hospitals that work. I mean, it's just crazy. But at the same time, it's a it's beautiful spot. where the blues come from, right? That's right. And, uh, oh, dude, oh, man. God. See? I know. I mean, you can't make that up. Look at that. No, it's, it's just like, like Dagobah. I like, know. It I, is. I, I, like, <laughs> Oh, okay. So so you take the Mississippi Delta. You got that in your mind? So I go study ukulele in in uh, Molokai. Wait, is that the right way to say it? Both are correct. Ukulele? Yuka or uka. I'm saying ukulele. Ukulele. My master plan right now is to connect. I want to take artists from the Mississippi Delta yeah. to Molokai, have them learn Hawaiian, then take people from Molokai to the Mississippi Delta. Like being able to connect those two things together. Yeah, because here you've got these two worlds that are completely different, but the same. They're both yeah. desperate poverty. They both have serious problems with uh, social issues, drugs, access yeah. to health care. Yeah, yeah. You know, unemployment, yeah. diabetes, all these problems. But the music and the art yeah. coming out of both of them is stunning. So you're thinking about like a nonprofit type of thing to put We're together? We're talking about just... putting together an album and a, and a video. You've done some amazing things all the way across, like being able to do... Uh, uh, like <laughs> at old Miss and debating <laughs> all the way through to the mo like to to what you're doing right now. Yeah, it's really eclectic and it's really unique. It's it's weird uh, for sure. Yeah. It hasn't always been great economically, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. Yeah, you know, I couldn't right? imagine going and doing like a jobby job job job. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Even an opportunity to come and hang out with you for a little while is yeah. pretty pretty cool, pretty interesting. Ukulele it up, right? That's what I'm saying, G. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, drink some more Dago Bot. Thank you for being on the show. It um, is it's a, a delight. Pleasure. Um, yeah, for what it's worth. Yeah. Gestalt, Gestalt, right Dalton Chong. <laughs> hey everybody, thanks for watching the show. And if you like what you see, if you if you love what you see, then subscribe. Uh, uh, ring the bell, ring the bell. That's the, the cool kids, that's how they say it. And 
and then I'll show up, or we'll show up. And if you have a screw up that you want to talk about, go to fups.com. I hope to see you on the show.